Hey, what's up guys? It's Connie here. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about chosen ones and the nine to five job. All right. So <coughs> now before I begin, I just want to uh, read you um, a passage from Luke chapter two about Jesus um, when he was a little boy growing up. Now, there's not a lot of um, information on Jesus as a little boy, but we know that he was very, um, he was very insightful. He was very mature, kind of like an old soul. He was very, um, had spiritual insight, even as a little boy. Um, and in chapter Luke chapter 2, um, uh, verse 41, starting, it says, His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover and when he was 12 years old they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast when they had finished the days as they returned the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mothers did not and his mother did not know it but supposing him to have been in the company they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances so when they did not find him Okay, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now it was that af now it was that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them, okay? Now I love this passage, guys, because Chosen ones are so incredibly gifted and talented, okay? But because we were born into this matrix of a society, this earth realm that is run by Satan, who is the father of lies, okay? So everything that we see around us, let me make this a little bit brighter. That's darker. All right. Um, we are constantly constantly being told that we are not good enough that we need to try to be a certain way all right like i talked about this in my last video oh you need to be a doggy it's a doggy dog world you need to be like this you need to have this kind of attitude you know to get ahead in life you know you got to go get what's mine and and all of this stuff this narcissistic kind of bent right you are constantly being told by your parents by the media by your authority figures, by your teachers, who and what you should be. All right? Forget your gifts and your talents. No, you should be doing this. You should be doing that. And chosen ones are so incredibly gifted and talented, but guess what? The world, the society that we live in, we've been told that we are not good enough. All right? That that those gifts and those talents that we have, it's not worth much, all right? So because we're constantly bombarded by other people and other influences of who and what we should be, we actually really don't know ourselves very well. We don't know who we are. And everything, everything starts right there, guys, everything. That was basically the spiritual awakening that I had. That was the great revelation that I had from God from my spiritual awakening was Him revealing to me who I am. And it was like a veil being lifted up from my eyes, guys. It was crazy. Everything starts there. Know thyself. If you don't know yourself, then how do you know what kind of profession or job or whatever to go into? I have had so many different jobs, you guys, and every single thing that I have done, right? I just felt like my soul was, the life force was being sucked out of my soul. 
<laughs> that is what it felt like. Every job, there were some days where I would just be like, I would come home and I would just cry. I would just be like, is this gonna be the rest of my life? How much longer am I gonna be here? And it's this feeling of like, just thinking like, I am so much more. I could be doing something more, okay? And, and it's like, I was, it's that feeling of I was meant for greater. I was meant for more than this. That's the nagging feeling that a chosen one has. Now, I am not knocking the nine to five job, you guys. We have to all pay our bills, all right? We have to, you know, put food on the table. We got to feed our kids. We got to get them through school. We got to give them lessons and extracurricular activities. We got to buy stuff, right? We have to live. We have to buy food. We have to eat to live. And that's part of life, all right? But I'm, t I'm talking to a very specific group of people here. I'm not knocking the nine to five. I'm just saying for the chosen ones, those ones that God has a higher calling, a greater purpose in their lives, you're going to have that feeling. You're going to have that feeling where it's like, I can be doing something else. I am meant for greater. Okay. And the thing is, you're not, you don't know what it is. And so it's this real frustrating kind of thing because God, for whatever reason, will hide your purpose from you. He will hide it from other people. He will hide your value from yourself. And, and it's the craziest thing. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know the mysteries of God. I don't know why he would do something like that. All right. It sucks to have to go through life not knowing who you are and what you were meant to do. And so in his timing, I don't know why, but it, right now I'm 46 years old. All right. God has decided, all right, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let you in on that little secret. <laughs> the question that you've had your whole life in his perfect time. So that's why I feel like there is a great shift in the world right now. God is good. God is doing amazing things. There's some crazy God is doing something big. Let's just say that. All right. There's a reason why he woke me up. There's a reason why Jesus called my name and I rose up from the dead state that I was in that slumber state. And I walked out of the tomb. Oh my gosh. I heard my name. Jesus called my name. Let me get up now. That's what it was like. Lazarus coming out of the tomb after being dead for four days and Jesus called him, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus heard Jesus calling him a dead guy, all right, a dead kid, got up, came out of the tomb. It literally was feeling like a deep, I was in a deep slumber. I was like trying to wake up from the way Morpheus um, describes it too to Neo. He's like, he's like, the matrix feels like you're in a deep slumber and you're constantly in a dream state that you're trying to wake up from and you can't wake up from it. That's what it was like. When God reveals to you who you, when God has to reveal it, you can try your whole life trying to be this and trying to be that and trying to go into that job and trying to go to that career and trying to be this person and blah, 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 blah. It's not ever going to fulfill you because for chosen ones, your job, your career, it has to be in alignment with who you are. It can't be just something that you do for money. It has to be aligned with your gifts, your talents, your purpose, that's the only way that you're going to have true fulfillment. Now, Jesus, all right, we read Jesus was a carpenter. Okay, the story that I just read you, Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 41, he was already displaying so such talent, okay, such insight, 
that people were astonished. The word was astonished, right? But then he ended up becoming a carpenter. He ended up becoming a carpenter. And I'm sure Jesus knew that that was not his life path. It was not his career, his, his, um, the career that he was going to die with. No. That was something that he just, he did. But I'm sure he knew there was something greater that God had planned for him. Now, what's interesting is there had to be a point in Jesus' life as well where he knew that he would have to go to the cross. And, and the Bible doesn't talk about that, right? But I, I doubt that at age 12 that he knew that, okay, I'm going to have to go to the cross. I'm going to have to die for people's sins. I'm going to bring many sons to glory with the shedding of my blood on a Roman cross. I don't think he knew that from the day that he was born. I'm sure that he had to go through life and, and, and that at the right time, all right, and this applies to you and to me, God's timing, he's gonna reveal to you who you are and what your purpose is. And he's gonna do it in his divine timing, okay? So it's, it's a mystery to me too. I'm sitting here going, I'm scratching my head going, God, why? Pfft, I'm 46. I'm almost 50 years old. I'll be four. I'll be, in four years, I will be 50. Now, was there a part of me that felt like, man, I wasted a lot of my life? Of course. But it wasn't a waste. It wasn't a waste. It made me just realize, you know, all that, all of all of the toiling, okay? All of the nights that I would cry coming home. All of the, all the nights where, you know, it would be like the end of the week and I'd be like, oh no, you know, it's Sunday. I, I got work on Monday, you know? The dread, the dread, okay? All of that. God wanted me to experience that so that I could find joy in the work that he's going to have me do. All right? It, it, it's to create a sense of awe. Like, God, man, I did all that, all those jobs that I just felt like I never fit. That's another thing. As a chosen one, those, those jobs that you do that's not aligned with who you are and your gifts and your talents, all those jobs, you're going to feel like, Oh, I just lost my train of thought. Get out of here, devil. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> so, let me just think for a second. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus right now. Get out of here. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A lot of the times, the nine to five job is almost, it, it, it can feel like slavery, okay? I'm not saying those people that are in the nine to five jobs, you can't make the most of it. You can't make impact at your job place, but I'm talking to a certain group of people right now. The chosen ones, we have certain characteristics about ourselves, and that's why we, we have a hard time. I've been fired from many jobs as well, okay? We have a hard time being told what to do by another person. Like, my master is not you, the boss at the job. My master is Jesus Christ. That's who I answer to. So that's why it's hard for, for chosen ones to do a 9-to-5 job. It feels like you're a slave, all right? Your care, the, the who you are is actually a leader. You're not a follower. You're not meant to, uh, you know follow and be below your leader that's who you are all right and it doesn't matter right now if you don't have any leadership positions connie i i know i'm chosen by god but i don't have a leadership position in my church and my job or whatever it doesn't matter leadership is not something that you do it's not just something that you do it's who you are is what i'm trying to say and so for me i'm a leader I don't follow, even even in like general everyday life, I don't follow the crowd. 
I go the opposite way, actually. And that's why organized religion didn't work for me. Organized religion was, was very much about having you under control. Like, oh, you're going to speak up? No, 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 no. You better shut your mouth. I'm going to beat you into submission. You better think and act and, 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 and do everything like everybody else in the church. Or you don't, you're not one of us. You can't have your own opinion. Sorry. That's not me. That is not me. I will speak up about something if I don't agree. If I think it's wrong. It's not me trying to be controlling or anything like that. When I see something that is wrong, I will speak up about it. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> uh, because that's me. The prophetic part of me cannot tolerate wrongdoing, unrighteousness, injustice. I cannot tolerate it. You best believe I am going to speak up. That's tied to why I left my old church. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into it, but that's you are a leader. You lead. You f you don't follow. That's who you are. Okay? So that's why a lot of chosen ones are very they're very talented, they're very creative, they don't think like normal people. Like I I'm Asian, okay? I did not do well in math, you guys. Math and science. My brain, the makeup of who I am, that's not who I am. Finance, I try to do finance. That's not me. And then, and then I tried to have those jobs, try to be in those jobs, and I sucked. I absolutely were ho was horrible at it. I, and then I was made to feel like I was less than, like I was dumb. I was stupid because I couldn't do those things. But guess what? Guess what God revealed to me? My child, you are brilliant. You are a genius in the spirit. I see things in the spirit that people, normal people, those people that are really good in math and science and finance, they can't see those things that I see. So they're dumb spiritually. But that's what the world is all about. It tries to make you compare yourself to other people and all of this like, okay, well, I'm not that person, so I'm not, you know, I'm not good enough, blah, 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 blah. There have been many things that I tried to do because there were other people and influences that told me that's what I should do. Like, I'll just give you an example. My mom told me I should go into real estate because I couldn't find myself. I didn't know who I was, so she had to tell me who I should be. I did real estate for seven years. I freaking hated it. I absolutely hated every part of it. I mean, I feel like I'm an entrepreneur, but not in that area, you know? Um, my purpose is, is greater. I help people with their spiritual state. I can heal. I can help with your healing. I can help you with whatever blocks I can see. If I just spend a little bit of time with you, talk to you a little bit, I'm around you, I can zone in immediately on what you need, what, where, you're, where you're being oppressed by, by the enemy. I can, I can help. That's my purpose. That's who I am. I can't do any other kind of job. And there was another time where I was like, I was into those fashion blogs, right? And I was like, oh, I want to do that. I want to be a fashion blogger. I ain't that fashionable. <laughs> I, I, I did a blog post and I looked at the fashion that I was wearing. I was like, uh-uh, no. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? It, it, it's this crazy thing where it's like, we're trying to be something, but it's not really who we are. And you have to first find out who you are. And that's going to come from spending time in solitude with God. That's it. That's how the answers are going to come. That is it. You have to let God t show you who you are. And then from there, everything falls into place. I'm just like, God, why did it have to take so long though? Dang. 
46 years old. It's all right. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> what? Abraham had it like, when did he have um, Isaac? He had him when he was, it's in his perfect time, his perfect time. All right, guys, that is it. If you found this video, <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. This is kind of funny video to me. If you found this video to be a blessing or an encouragement to you, all right, find me on my uh, Instagram. That's the only social media that I'm really um, on nowadays. And it's really just more like my personal Instagram. If you want, um, my stories and my pictures are just going to be about my family. But if you want like spiritual stuff, you can watch my reels. They're like one minute long. You get a nugget, a chunk of, of spirituality for your day. And a lot of people have been enjoying those. So go ahead and add me, Connie K. Yom, on my Instagram. And then send me a message and say, hey, Connie, I came from YouTube. And that'll just make me so happy. Because I need friends on there. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for my soul tribe, my kindred spirits out there, you guys. All right? And, um, yeah, so thanks for listening. And I hope you have an awesome and amazing, blessed day. I love you guys. I'll catch you in the next one.